Now, I want to <laughs> uh, move over there, will you? Another loaf coming up here. What you do is to press this out. Let it rise uh, well, first, you see. Let it rise once. And then we're going to press it out into a big pizza affair. But I want it rectangular because I want to cook this in a, in a pan. I don't want to, uh, there it is. I don't want to cook it on a tray. This is going to be a very thick loaf, much thicker than a pizza. I've got a beautiful marble rolling pin here. I just love to use it. It's, it just weighs a ton. One of my friends that helps me in the morning picked this thing up this morning, and she said, oh, my God. Well, maybe a little heavy, but uh, you don't have to work so hard. Now, that's about the size I want, huh? That should fit my pan. All right. Now, remember, this has already been raised once. Then you punch it down, spread it out. Let me get a pan here for us. And into a very oily pan. What did I do with the olive oil? Here it is. Lots of olive oil in this one. You oil it up. Isn't this a kick? Now I'm going to put it right in here. There we go. Come to me. And just push it around until you get what you want. Now let that rise until it's not quite double in bulk. Let's get that wrinkle out of the way here. There we go. Let that rise until it's not quite double in bulk. And then you take after it with a fork. You really give it the works. And thusly. Okay. Now, we're ready to go with some garlic. Where did I put my garlic press? Here he is. Garlic on bread? Of course. We're making an Italian bread. Put some garlic on this. One clove will be fine. And I want to add some pepper, too. There we go. We'll just rub this in with our fingers. Pepper, garlic, there we go. Just rub the old garlic all around. You don't have to have perfect shape on this, but it's easier if you can just keep banging it around as it rises. Remember, now, this has risen once, and then I punched it down with a fork. Got that? Then I've added the garlic and the uh, pepper. Now I'm going to brush it with a very rich paste, tomato paste, of course. Okay, and then we'll top this off with some oregano and some chopped green onions. And we come up with an onion bread from the south, the southern part of Italy. You know, tomatoes weren't common in the north. Did you know that? That's not common in Italian cooking at all, just in the south. Okay, who's got the onions? Here they are. There we go. And a shot of oregano. And we're going to bake this in a 375 degree oven for about 25 minutes. And you come up with something that's just heavenly. The kids will go berserk, just berserk. There we go. Enjoy. You want to see what you wind up with? Here it is, focaccio from Italy. You see? Isn't that a lovely thing? It's thick enough so that, let me transfer to the board, and I'll show you how it's cut. And then we want to review proper baking methods because I haven't told you how to steam your French bread, and that's the only way you're going to get a crust. And I'll show you how to do it quickly and easily. But I want, to, want you to get a view of this beautiful focaccio. It's just a lovely bread. Okay? You cut it into big squares like this. There we go. And then again, something like so. You know who I'm making this for? You thought it was for you. This is not for you. This is for my son, Jason whom we affectionately call Starch Mouth in our house. He's, uh, he's much older now, but from the time he was a baby, Jason ate starch above anything else. Now, you see, you cut this in the middle. And this is how they do it. In San Francisco, there's a joint called the uh, La Cantina on Union Street, and he makes a sandwich out of this beautiful bread and he puts salami on this and a little lettuce, and then he pours uh, an olive oil dressing all over it. It comes to the table so rich, a little bit of provolone hanging out the sides. It's so rich, you can hardly stand it but I order one every time I get near his place. Focaccio from Italy. Now, the French bread, let's review that. We've got two pounds, three ounces of flour blended into exactly two and a half cups of tepid water, two cakes of yeast, and we blend four cups of the flour first, whip it around like mad until it turns to gluten, 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 gluten. You want goo, remember that, it's important. Then you add the teaspoon of salt, mix with the teaspoon of water, and then knead in the rest of your flour, and the recipe's complete. You see? Let that rise once on a counter with a covered, uh, covered with a bowl. Punch it down. Let it rise a second time. Punch it down again, and then you're ready to start molding. Now, when you mold the loaves and put them on the pan, please understand 
that you want to use a bit of cornmeal. And I keep my white cornmeal right out here. I put some on the bottom of the bread, and I also put some right on the board. That way I don't have to use uh, a lot of oil, you see. White cornmeal is great. You can use yellow if you prefer. It doesn't matter. Then that goes into a 450 degree oven after the dough has raised. It goes into a 450 degree oven, and in the bottom of the oven, I've got another bread in there, I have a pan full of hot water. Hot water will keep the, the oven steaming all of the time. You must remember the hot water. It goes right in the bottom of the oven, full of water, when you start your baking process. And after 25 minutes, check it, and you'll wind up with gorgeous treasures. Remember, the steam and gluten will give you the kind of crust you want. And you want crustiness. You want a bread that's just going to crack when you eat it so that everybody can enjoy themselves. That's how I make bread. And this is for my son, Jason, uh, who is my bread freak. When you go to the table next time, then, and uh, you reach for a loaf of bread, please grab something with some body. Bread is an ancient food product, and it's to support us. It's not a dent on the table, nor is it goo that's supposed to stick in your teeth. It's to have some body. Do that. Use this recipe. You'll enjoy it. I'm glad we could be together today. You are my companion, and I hope someday we can eat together. Until that time, this is the Frugal Gourmet. I bid you peace. Bye-bye.